Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 131 of ASP.NET video tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about cache dependency on SQL Server database table. Let's understand that with an example. Let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. I have this table TBL products here, which has got some sample data. I want to display this data in my ASP.NET web application in this grid view control. And that should happen when I click this button, Get Data. So here I have straightforward ADO.NET code. The first line here actually reads the connection string from web.config file, which is pointing to SQL Server that's installed on my local machine. And then we are creating SQL connection object using that connection string. And and preparing SQL data adapter object. Look at the command here. We are retrieving all the products from TBL products table. And then we are creating an instance of the data set object, filling that data set with the data that we get after we execute this command. Okay, at this point we have this data set which we are then caching using the cache objects insert method. And then we are setting the data set as the data source for the grid view control, calling data bind method. And finally, we are displaying this message, you know, data retrieved from database at the date and time at which we have done that in this label control. So pretty straightforward code. But then if you look at this code as it stands now, every time we click this button, it's going to connect to the database, execute that command, retrieve the data, cache it, and then set that as data source, invoke data bind. We don't want that to be happening. If the data set is there already in cache, we want to retrieve the data from cache rather than going and executing the commands against database. Okay, and just to speed things up, I have that coded already. So let me copy and paste that here. So if you look at this code, what we are doing, we are checking, okay, uh, in cache, do we have products data? If that's the case, go ahead and retrieve it from cache. Set that as data source for the grid view control invoke data bind. And then display a message in the label stating that data is retrieved from cache and the date and time at which we have done that. Let's go ahead and close the cells block now. Okay, so we are basically retrieving this data from TBL products table and caching that within an ASP.NET web application. But remember, what I want to do is, once we have cached that, you know, anytime, if anybody changes this data, if, if this data changes for any reason, then I want the data to be removed from cache immediately. Is that possible? Absolutely. And there are three simple steps to achieve that. Okay, so what's step one? Step one, enable change notifications on the database. So what do we mean by enabling change notifications? Now look at this. At the moment, we have uh, you know executed this command, retrieve the data and cache that, that's fine. But then when the data changes, SQL Server should notify ASP.NET uh, web application about that change so that the ASP.NET web application can remove that data from cache. Okay, so to to, to notify those change notifications, we should enable that on the SQL Server database and then on that table as well. So here, the database is sample database and the table is TBL products. So we should enable change notifications on this database sample and table TBL products. And there are two ways to do that. We can either do that programmatically in code using SQL cache dependency admin class, which has got this enable notifications static method and to enable table for notifications, we have you know a corresponding static method. Okay, so we can either do that programmatically in code using this SQL cache dependency admin class. Okay, or we can also use this command line tool ASP.NET underscore register SQL dot exa. And obviously, since this is a command line tool, we can run that in Visual Studio Command Prompt. So to open Visual Studio Command Prompt, click on Start, go to All Programs, Microsoft Visual Studio 2010, Visual Studio Tools. And then within that, you should see Visual Studio Command Prompt uh, 2010. So once we have that command prompt opened, then you need to execute these commands that you can see here. Um, there are two commands. Uh, the first command here is like this, ASP.NET underscore register SQL. So let me paste that there. So ASP.NET underscore register SQL. And then there are some switches here. Hyphen ED means enable database uh, for you know, change notification. Basically, if you want to understand what those switches mean, you can use, you know, forward slash question mark option, and then it will show you all the help there. Okay, so here you can basically see hyphen ed means enable a database for SQL cache dependency. Okay, that's what this option means. And then there is something called hyphen e. What does that mean? That means 
uh, since we are making a change to SQL Server database, you know, you need to obviously authenticate yourself. When I specify hyphen E, I'm saying use my Windows authentication. On the other hand, if you don't have a Windows authentication and you want to use your explicit username and password, you can do that using hyphen U and hyphen P. Hyphen U for username and then specify your login and then hyphen P for your password and then specify your password. So you can either you know, authenticate yourself using SQL Server authentication or Windows authentication. So if you want to authenticate yourself with Windows credentials, uh, you use hyphen E, just like how I have done that. And hyphen D stands for the name of the database. So in my case, the database name is going to be sample. So I'm going to copy this command and then paste it in this tool, ASP.NET underscore register SQL, and then press Enter. So enabling the database for SQL cache dependency and it says finished. Okay, so we have just enabled the entire database, but then in that database I have a table called TBL products on which I have to enable that. So I'm going to copy another command and then paste that here. Now it's pretty much similar to the previous command except that we also have a table name specified with hyphen T option. So I press enter, enabling the table for SQL cache dependency and it says finished. So we are done. So first step is enabling change notifications on the database. And remember, there are two ways to do that. You can either do that programmatically in code using SQL cache dependency admin class, or you can use ASP.NET underscore register SQL.exe tool. All right, what's the second step? We need to build SQL cache dependency object. Okay, and that's straightforward to do. All you need to do is create an instance of this class, SQL cache dependency. So I'm gonna do that here. And obviously, when we create an instance of this class, so SQL cache dependency, let's call that SQL dependency is equal to new SQL cache dependency. And look at the constructor. You can specify the database name and the table name. So here the database is sample and the table is uh, TBL product. So that's what I'm going to specify here. So sample is the database and the table is TBL products. Okay, so we have the SQL cache dependency object. Now, I can use this overloaded version if I want, but I can use another simpler overloaded version which takes just three parameters. Uh, the cache key and the data that I want to cache and the cache dependency object. Look at this here. The object is cache dependency, but my object that I am passing into this method as a parameter is SQL cache dependency object. Is it possible to be done? Absolutely. That's because if you look at SQL cache dependency, that actually inherits from cache dependency class. So you can pass it as an inherited type. So I'm going to pass the SQL dependency object. So that's the second step. Okay, prepare your SQL cache dependency object and then pass it to the insert method when you're caching the data so that the cached data knows there is a SQL dependency. Okay, so that's our second step. What is the third step? Third step is in web.config file we need to specify SQL cache dependency settings. Okay, so again just to speed things up I have that already typed in so let me copy that and paste this in web.config file. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So here I have my web.config file. So if you look at the connection string, the name of the connection string is DB connection string, which is pointing to SQL Server that's installed on my local machine. And then I'm going to have these uh, caching settings and the system.web uh, system node, I have this caching element. And within that, I have the SQL cache dependency. And look at this, uh, enabled is equal to true, obviously. That means we have enabled SQL cache dependency. And the important thing to notice here is the poll time, which is set to 2000. Now, this time is actually is in milliseconds. Since I have set this time to 2000, it means uh, two seconds, basically. So every two seconds, ASP.NET you know, application is going to check with SQL Server, are there any changes uh, to that you know, table, basically, within that sample database. So that's what this poll time means. Now, this is optional, meaning if you don't specify poll time, the default is 500 milliseconds, meaning every half second, you know, that's the frequency at which ASP.NET application will poll the database to check for any notification, I mean, changes for that database table. Okay, and obviously we have this database element where we are specifying name is sample and connection string is that one. Okay, cool.
So those are the three steps we are done. We are we have now established a SQL cache dependency. So let me go ahead and run this now. So control F5, as soon as the web application loads, when we click that button get data, it should execute that command, retrieve data, and load that uh, into cache. Okay, so data retrieved from database at this time. So now every time I click this button, it's going to retrieve that from cache. So it's going to, this data set is going to stay in cache, you know, uh, until it has been changed. So I click that, I still get it from cache. But look at this, the moment I go and change this data in the database, so at the moment, if you look at this, laptops is laptops. So I'm going to update that to laptops one. I press F5, you know, one row affected. Now look at this, as soon as I say get data, data retrieved from database at that time. Okay, so the data that was already cached is removed from cache because ASP.NET application detected the data has changed. So now no matter how many times I click, it's going to be retrieved from cache unless somebody else is going to change the data again. So let me change this once again back to laptops and see what's going to happen. Okay, we have done that. And now let me click this, get data, look at that, you can see laptops, it's changed back to laptops, and then we got the data from database. So anytime the data uh, you know, in the database table changes, the I, I mean that data is removed from cache, and we have done that using SQL cache dependency. Three simple steps to do that. On this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today, thank you for listening, have a great day.